If you ask your average diesel bro what his favorite engine is, you're going to get a mixed bag of answers between Cummins, Power Stroke, and Duramax, with one of those engines being an inline six and two of them being a V8. But if you were to ask the same question to somebody in the commercial truck world, you'd get a wide array of answers, including Detroit, Packard, Caterpillar, Volvo, Mac, and so on. And that got me thinking, why do commercial trucks, why do semi trucks use inline six engines almost exclusively? In the world of gas cars, you have a wide array of configurations, inline fours, inline sixes, V6, V8, V10, and so on. But in that commercial world, in the world of semi trucks, it's pretty much all inline sixes. There's really no other configuration that's being made today. So sit back and get comfy because I'm going to tell you exactly why inline sixes are the superior engine platform in the commercial truck world, in the diesel world, and why they're also a great engine platform for gasoline powered cars. <laughs> To start this out, I think we should look at some of the more popular engines being made 2019, 2020, or you know, at least some sort of recent data so that we're on the same page as far as what's popular and what is not popular. This set of data actually comes from FleetSeek and it covers the 2019 to 2020 truck models and basically what engine was the most popular in heavy duty trucks. As you can see on this graph, Detroit is the most popular in 2020, followed by Packer, Cummins, Volvo, Mac, and Caterpillar. For Detroit, they're offering their DD engine line of inline six engines. Packer has their MX and PX line of engines, which are inline six. Cummins has a few different lines of engines with the ISX 15 being their flagship engine, which is an inline six. Volvo has their D11 and D13 engines, which are an inline six. Mac has their MP line of engines, which are an inline six. And then Caterpillar, who doesn't actually make on the road truck engines anymore, but they used to, and they were pretty much all inline six. So as you can see, pretty much everything on the market is an inline six. You have to go pretty far back to see anything other than an inline six being popular. The reason for why the inline six configuration has completely taken over as the go-to engine configuration for on the road commercial trucks are actually fairly simple, but let's hop into them one by one. The first reason for commercial trucks using this configuration is because there are no size constraints or at least very limited size constraints in these big trucks. Really the big reason that you'll find V configuration engines in cars is because cars have to have a relatively short hood and small engine bay. That means you cannot have a very long engine. In terms of gas cars, the outlier on this is BMW, who still uses a lot of inline six engines, even in some of their smaller applications. But for the most part, most manufacturers either use a V6, V8, or inline four. With a V8, for example, your engine is really only four cylinders long in length. So it's roughly half the length of an inline eight engine. And the exact same thing applies with a V6 engine and inline six engines. If you have size constraints, a V engine can often be the best solution, but commercial trucks really don't have any size constraints. These trucks are big with massive engine bays that have to house engines up to 15 or 16 liters in size. With that in mind, it's easy to fit a massive inline six engine in an equally massive truck. With very minimal size constraints, you can basically run any configuration you want. So an inline six isn't a size issue like it is on non-commercial trucks and cars. But that still begs the question, why choose an inline six over all the other available configurations? And that brings me to my next point, which is torque and engine speed. Now we've talked about this in other videos, but the relationship between bore and stroke has a big impact on your engine's performance. I'd like to highlight that there are a lot of people who claim that the inline six configuration is inherently better at producing torque or inherently produces more torque than any other configuration such as a V6 or V8. And I think it's worth noting that that's not actually really true. Now the different configurations allow different usage between bore and stroke and the relationship between those which allows each engine configuration to make more power, but the configuration itself isn't inherently going to produce more or less torque. To recap on some of the info from our bore versus stroke video, Bore is the diameter of the cylinder and stroke is the movement from bottom dead center to top dead center. Typically bore and stroke are measured in millimeters, but for many American engines you'll see these measured in inches. So mathematically bore and stroke are very simple, and if you wanted to increase displacement and ultimately increase power output, you would just increase bore or stroke. The easiest way to explain the torque measurement is to visualize 100 pounds on the end of a one foot wrench. 
that would equal 100 pound feet on the center of the axis of the nut that the wrench is putting force on. If you change this to a two foot wrench, you'd now be talking about 200 pound feet of torque. With this simple visual, you can see how increasing stroke would ultimately increase torque since you're increasing the throw of the crankshaft with the pivot point, which is the center of the crankshaft, further away from where the piston is pushing down on the crankshaft. Horsepower is just a function of torque times engine speed, whereas torque is a measurement of rotational force. In the case of these commercial trucks, they're hauling massive loads up to 70, 80, 90,000 pounds, and sometimes even more. So for them, horsepower is irrelevant in a sense. Sure, it's a useful measurement of performance output, but ultimately these trucks need huge amounts of torque. With these inline six engines, you'll generally see a big difference between bore and stroke. If we were to look at a Cummins X15, for example, we'll see that it has a bore of 137 millimeters and a stroke of 169 millimeters. With that longer stroke, the engine will inherently make a ton of torque, but it will be limited in terms of peak RPM, which in this context really doesn't matter at all. Most of these trucks spend their time between 1 and 2,000 RPMs, so a low rev limit isn't an issue for them at all. In fact, keeping RPMs low is one of the many things that allows these commercial engines to rack up millions of miles of use without failure. An engine built with a rev limit of 8,000 RPM is probably not going to live as long as an engine with a rev limit of 2,000 RPM. It just makes sense. Your engine is spinning slower, and ultimately that means less stress, and equally as important, the ability to maintain a very simple design and minimal parts. That brings us to the next major point, which is that the crank pins aren't shared on an inline six engine. What I mean by this is that with a V engine, you typically have two connecting rods bolted to one crank pin on the crankshaft. So those two connecting rods have to share limited bearing space. On top of that, the main journals before and after the crank pin basically have double the work to do because the crank pin is dealing with two pistons rather than one. On top of that, the rod bearings aren't shared on an inline engine, which means that the bearings have a much larger surface area to work with and provide lubrication with. That brings us to the next major reason for using an inline six engine, and that's simplicity. At the end of the day, a low revving inline six engine has less parts and less complicated parts than a comparable V engine. There's only one head, which means that there's less valve train parts to break and a simpler gear train. There's bigger bearings for improved lubrication. There's no need to focus on rotating assembly weight because the rev limit is super low. There's only one exhaust manifold and so on. To put it simply, pretty much everything is simpler on an inline six engine as compared to a V6 or V8 engine. And that can translate over to gas inline six engines as well. Regardless though, an inline six just simply has less parts to break, which means improved reliability, which is paramount when you're getting paid by the mile. And if your truck breaks down, your income stops. Now, the next major reason for using an inline six engine is that they are inherently balanced, unlike most engine configurations. If we were to take a V8 engine, for example, the force of the pistons don't cancel each other out. This is because almost all V8 engines have a crank throw of 90 degrees. With some basic math, you can see that this creates a positive net force, which creates a vibration in the vertical plane. We can see this by multiplying the number of cylinders by the crank throw which gives us 720 degrees. In order to balance this out, counterweights and balancing shafts are used. On the other hand, you can really break an inline six engine into two three cylinder engines with 120 degree crank throw. An inline three with 120 degree crank throw has a total of 360 degrees, which means there is inherently minimal vibration because the frequency is the same as, as the engine's rotation of 360 degrees. What I mean by this is that the inertial force of two pistons moving downwards cancels out the third piston moving upwards. Take this and double it up to an inline six, and it's simple to understand why the inline six configuration is inherently balanced as compared to other configurations. Now, the last major point that I'd like to bring up is that an inline six engine is much easier to work on and fully rebuild without removing the engine from the chassis because the frame rails really aren't in the way of anything since the engine is pretty much vertical. This means that in the case that your engine needs to be rebuilt or fixed, it'll ultimately have less labor associated with the repair as compared to a V engine. To summarize all this info, commercial trucks use the inline six configuration because it's not a space limitation, allows them to run a big stroke, which means more torque. It's mechanically simpler and more reliable than a V engine. 
offers improved bearing space and load for the crankshaft and connecting rod bearings, and it's inherently balanced, which means it doesn't need balancing shafts. Of course, there are other reasons for using the inline six engine, but everything we discussed in this video is pretty much every single major point, and I'm sure that there will be truckers and technicians, especially diesel technicians, down in the comments, you know, letting us know some of the other key points that make these engines so reliable, so efficient, and so good for this specific use. And if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the thumbs up button, it really helps me out. Drop a comment down below if you think there's anything I forgot to add or anything I might have accidentally messed up in this video. Drop a comment down below letting me know. While you're down there, get subscribed, check out some of the other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.